Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I am partial to stars when it comes to Christmas ornaments. And one advantage that I ha that comes from the ornament challenge is that I get to see a large variety of ornaments and get ideas from there. I'm not exclusive to that. You can also, but one that caught my eye was by Patrick Hogard. It essentially was a three axis turned star. Very similar to the one I get, did a bit ago with uh, following uh, another pattern. The problem with this one is that a, re a lot of the work was, had to do with developing the jig to turn it. This one did not. So for this one, let's go ahead and turn this star and see what we can make out of it. I am starting with a two and three quarter inch cube of butternut walnut. The exact dimension is not significant, only that each dimension is the same. I carefully marked center on each face and drilled a quarter inch hole from each face past center. This hole matches my mandrel but could be larger if I also use bushings. I decided to use a split mandrel system instead of a more typical pen mandrel. With wood instead of a metal tube, I think the split mandrel works a little better. I drew a couple of lines thinking that they could guide the extent and depth of the cove. It turns out that the only line that helped is the center line to supplement the hole as it spins by. With a freshly sharpened spindle gouge, I started cutting the cove. Since I am cutting a lot of air, two things are critical. One is splintering as the cut leaves solid wood. The other is the points that are extremely fragile. Still, I carefully worked the cut down to the solid face of the cube but no further. This time, at least, there is no benefit from cutting into solid wood. When I'm happy with the cove, I switch to 80 grit sandpaper. I'm using a narrow strip of canvas backed sandpaper so that I can hold both ends and let the middle of the strip do the work. 80 grit is the most important grit to establish the smooth curve. The rest of the grits get rid of the 80 grit scratches. I also sand at moderately high speed. After changing the mount to another set of holes, I can start cutting on the second axis. This is the same cove, except that the corners are even more fragile and the backside chipping has increased due to grain orientation. I'm finding that the best cut is a shear cut rather than a bevel riding cut. With the shear cut, the cutting edge is more vertical relative to the spinning wood. Less wood is removed with each cut, but this is offset by less chipping. I still use a variety of cuts to try to find the best. Again, my objective is to cut down to solid wood at each center face, but no further. A test of my center marking is how much variation I find from face to face. I sand again the same way. Now for the third axis. The only difference is that the corners are even more fragile, making shear cuts more critical. With the shear cut, the gouge handle is way down low, so that the flute edge is almost vertical. The finesse is relative to the change in angle relative to the curve. With more practice, I am more confident in these cuts. Then sand again. There is no economy in waiting to sand all at once, since I would have to change mounts all over again. The only difference is to ease any sharp edges with fine sandpaper. I necked my thumb. Since blood would spoil the finish, some masking tape will protect the wood from staining. 
Time for a refreshing rub down with shellac. Ah, but again on each of the three axes. It is time to turn the bottom finial. The cube is large, but I do not want a long finial that follows the one third, two thirds rule. I'll deviate from that rule this time. This wood is maple. I wonder what profile will complement the walnut cube. I still have time to think as I tackle the tenon that fits that quarter inch hole. Next time I will use a bushing so that the tenon is at least three eighths of an inch in diameter. I do not like quarter inch tenons. They are at the limit that my chuck can handle. Sharpened end wrenches cut down the tenon to be slightly oversized. But I do not worry about it being oversized because I have a full set of bits that can expand the hole a few thousands. But now the time is up. I have to commit to a profile. My compromise is to have a larger bulb near the cube, then work it down to smaller. For fine finial work, I switch from the gouge to a skew. Finials are fun. I used to worry about them, but not now. I do not like sharp points on finials where children may be involved. After sanding, how about another rub down with shellac? But there's still the tip to clean up. Here's where my chuck is at its minimum holding diameter. There is some axis variance, but it will not be noticeable since I'm only working at the very end of the finial. Now for a finial for the top, this will be shorter than the bottom finial, but not exactly the same. The bulb portion should complement the bottom finial. This time the tenon will be on the opposite side. Not a big deal with the end wrench cut tenon cutters. I do not have to test the tenon fit. Then sand and finish. However, the problem with this design is that I need four more finials to plug the axis holes. How about an even smaller of the top version of the top finial? With the contrast between the light maple and the dark walnut, this will be nice. Now that the stars are finished, let's compare the two. This one requires a jig. This one, well, you had to turn drill axes in it and then figure out a good way to plug the axes. In this case, for the star, this did a great job. Uh, Patrick used uh, the same wood, which was also good, but I liked this one and how it complemented between the light maple and the dark walnut. But this one, I think there's still some possibilities and that we can take with this. This one goes much, much deeper into the center. Maybe there's a compromise that we could do partway in, somewhere between these two in terms of depth. This one's a little bit large proportionally, so it could be lighter. Uh, so there's room for change. I'm not sure improvement, but change for sure and adapt it into different things. So stay tuned. We'll see when we get around to that one. But always subscribe, like, and remember your full face shield.